anatomy and physiology of the ear. The ear is an organ of hearing and also involved in balance. It is supplied by the eight cranial nerve known as acoustic nerve. The structures which form this ear are encased in the petrous portion of the temporal bone with the exception of the auricle or the pinna. The ear is divided into three distinct parts. That is the outer ear or external ear, middle ear known as the tympanic cavity, and the inner ear. The outer ear collects the sound waves and directs them to the middle ear, which in turn transfers them to the inner ear, where they convert it into nerve impulses and transmit it to the hearing area in the cerebral cortex. Let's start with the outer ear. The outer ear consists of the auricle, the pinna, and the external acoustic meatus known as the auditory canal. The auricle is the visible part of the ear which projects from each side of the head. And it's made of fibroelastic cartilage covered by the skin. The lobe is the soft pliable part of the lower extremity and it is composed of a fibrous and adipose tissue richly supplied with blood. External acoustic meatus known as the auditory canal. This canal is an S-shaped canal or tube about 2.5 cm long extending from the auricle to the tympanic membrane. The lateral third is embedded in cartilage and the remainder lies within the temporal bone. So this meatus is lined with the skin continuous through that of the auricle and it has ceruminous glands and hair follicles. These ceruminous glands secrete cerumen and they are modified sweat glands. This earwax or cerumen is a protective substance containing bactericidal enzymes like lysosomes and immunoglobulins. Foreign materials such as dust, insects and microbes are prevented from reaching the tympanic membrane by the wax, hairs and the coverage of the meatus. The middle ear of the tympanic cavity. This is an air filled cavity within the petrous portion of the temporal bone. And the cavity, its contents, and the air sacs, which open out of it, are lined with the atosquamous epithelium or cupido epithelium. The lateral wall of the middle ear is formed by tympanic membrane, therefore known as tympanic wall. The roof and the floor are formed by temporal bones, and the posterior wall is formed by the temporal bone with openings leading to the mastoid antrum. The middle wall is a thin layer of temporal bone in which there are two openings, that is, the oval window and the round window. The oval window is occluded by a part of the small bone known as the stapes and the round window by a fine sheet of fibrous tissue. Pharyngeal tympanic or eustachian tube. This is a tube which links the nasopharynx and the middle ear. It is about 4 cm long in an adult and lined with ciliated columnar epithelium. The presence of air at atmospheric pressure on the both sides of the tympanic membrane is maintained by the pharyngeal tympanic tube and it enables the membrane to vibrate when sound waves strike it. This membrane is normally closed, pressure difference when it opens. There are three very small bones in the ear known as the ossicles and they extend across the middle ear from the tympanic membrane to the orb window. These ossicles form a series of movable joints with each other and with the middle wall of the cavity at the oval window. 
they are held in place by fine ligaments and let us start with the malleus. Malleus is a lateral hammer like shaped bone. The handle is in contact with its tympanic membrane and the head forms a movable joint with the incus. The incus is a middle amphi shaped bone. This bone its body articulates with the malleus and the long process with the stapes and established by the short process and fixed by fibrous tissue to the posterior wall of the tympanic cavity. Then the, another bone is the stapes. The medial stirrup shaped bone is known as the stapes. This stapes its head articulates with the incus and its footplate fits with the oval window. The inner ear labyrinth. The inner ear contains organs of hearing and balance. It has the bone labyrinth and the membranous labyrinth. It is also divided into three main regions. That is the vestibule which contains the utricle and the circle, three semicircular canals and the cochlea. The inner ear is formed from the network of channels and cavities in the temporal bone and therefore known as the bony labyrinth. The membranous labyrinth lies within the bony labyrinth and is a network of fluid filled membranes which lie and fill the bony labyrinth. The bony labyrinth is lined with the periosteum. And within the bony labyrinth, the membranous labyrinth is suspended with a watery fluid known as the perilymph. And in the membranous labyrinth, it is filled with endolymph. The vestibule. This is the expanded part near the middle ear. The oval and round windows are located in its lateral walls and it contains two membranous sacs that is the utricle and the circle which are important in balance. We have semicircular canals which are three tubes arranged so that one is situated in each of the three planes of the space. They are continuous to the vestibule and also important in balance. The cochlea. This cochlea resembles a snail's shell and it has a broad base where it is continuous with the vestibule and the narrow apex and it spirals around the central body column. A cross section of the cochlea contains three compartments that is the scala vestibuli, the scala media or cochlea duct and the scala tympani. The bony cochlea has two compartments containing perilymph. The vestibular canal or the scala vestibule which originates at the oval window and the scala tympani or tympani canal which ends at the round window. The two compartments are continuous with each other and the cochlea duct is part of the membranous labyrinth and is triangular in shape. On the basilar membrane or the base of the triangle there are supporting cells and specialist cochlear hair cells which contain auditory receptors. We have the organ of Corti in this cochlea. This organ of Corti is formed by specialist cells, therefore it is essentially organ which responds to vibration by initiating nerve impulses which are then perceived as hearing within the brain. The auditory receptors are dendrites of the efferent nerves which combine forming the cochlear part of the vestibular cochlear nerve. And this nerve then passes through the foramen of the temporal bone to read the hearing area in the temporal lobe of the cerebrum.